Let's start a dual core project creation for STM32 WL55 using STM32 Cube IDE. The important point once we start project creation of an STM32 Cube IDE or CubeMX is a selection of this enable multi CPUs configuration. With this setting, both uh, applications, so either STM32 Cube IDE or STM32 CubeMX, will generate in fact, two projects related to both cores. Now we will have as well uh, separate uh, interrupt controllers for both cores, uh, which would allow us to assign different interrupt vectors for both cores. Okay, I'm starting stm 32 cubeide IDE. In my case, it will be web version 1.5.1. .1. I will use some existing workspace. And within this workspace, I would create a new project. So I click this create a new STM32 project. Our microcontroller, because I would use the MC1 view selector, it will be WL55J. This is on the one, so I click next. And now uh, the name of our project will be stm 32 wl underscore basic underscore dual underscore core. And important point is to check whether this enable multi CPUs configuration is selected because it allows us, uh, it, it informs uh, stm 32 cube IDE that we would like to create, in fact, two projects for both cores. I click Finish. As we can see, the skeleton of the complete application is done. It is, uh, it creates, in fact, Two projects for both cores for ARM Cortex M4 and ARM Cortex M0 Plus as expected. Okay, so now we can see mm, the configuration perspective. So this is the common point with STM32 CubeMX. And um, now we can create uh, mm, our simple application. Before I will start, uh, I would improve a bit the visibility uh, within this configuration. So I go to this icon, I click on left button on mouse and I select show contexts. If I click now on any of the peripherals, I can see that I can have a better view what is assigned to where, uh, which peripherals are assigned to which core in fact. So we've got Cortex M4 and we've got Cortex M0 Plus. This M O M0 P is Cortex M0 Plus core. In this exercise we will need only couple of GPIOs and we will assign them to both cores. We've got three buttons and three LEDs. I would start with buttons. So B1 button is connected to pin PA0. So I would click left button on mouse, select GPIO XT0 as I would like to use it as an external interrupt. Now right button on mouse, I would name it B1. And again, right button on mouse, pin reservation, and this one I would assign to Cortex M0 Plus. Then button B2, it is PA1 pin. So again, left button on mouse, XTI1, right button on mouse, label B2, right button on mouse, pin reservation. This one will be assigned to Cortex M4. And the B3, button B3, is connected to pin PC6, PC6. And again, left button on mouse, XT6, right button on mouse, label B3, right button on mouse, pin reservation, and this would be Cortex M0. The similar configuration we will do for three LEDs. LED1 is connected to PB15. 
So left button on mouse, JPIO output, right button on mouse, label LED1, and right button on mouse, pin reservation, and this one will be connected to Cortex M4. LED2 is uh, connected to pin PB9, and we would like to connect it, to assign it to Cortex M0+. Plus. So PB9 output. LED2 and assignment to Cortex M0 plus. And last LED, LED3 is connected to pin PB11. And this we would like to assign to Cortex M4. So output label LED3 and assignment to Cortex M4. Okay. Then we would like to activate pull-ups on all three buttons. I'm selecting GPIO from system and core and for all external components I'm assigning I'm let's say configuring pull-up. So PA0, PA1, PC6, everywhere pull-up. Then uh, I need to activate interrupts for all of those free pins. So I go to NVIC tab over here and I will select interrupts for all of the all of the components. Okay, so this is uh, this is next uh, next point. Then it would be good as well to change a bit the priorities. So we can go to NVIC1, which is related to Cortex M4, and we can change this XTI line 1 from 0 to, for example, 1. This is done due to the fact that the highest interrupt should be assigned to Cystic. And uh, to um, let's say minimize the situation that using one of the libraries with an interrupt procedure could uh, let's say interact somehow negatively interact with the narcissistic. Uh, so the same story with NVIC2. So for both interrupts I would select lower pro uh, priority set to 1. And concerning the configuration of the uh, peripherals that's all we need to do within this uh, part. Uh, clock configuration we will leave uh, default one, so the clock would be set to 4 MHz for both cores coming from MSI internal oscillator. Uh, for the project manager we will use all of the default settings, so the only point we need to do now is to click this gear icon to generate the project. In fact, two projects for Cortex M0 Plus and for Cortex M4. Okay, so we can close this IOC and we will switch to CC++ perspective which allows us to make necessary coding in both uh, projects. What is important is that both applications, uh, CubeMX and CubeIDE, is generating the project for both cores automatically, are adding as well uh, the activation line for uh, Cortex-M0+. Plus which is within this point too, uh, because uh, with an stm 2 WL55 device, only Cortex-M4 is starting automatically after the power on or power after the reset, and within the Cortex-M4 core we need to activate Cortex-M0+. It can be done, for example, by uh, this line coming from HAL library. Both uh, applications, so CubeMix and CubeIDE, create two linker files uh, for both cores. So as we can see, Cortex M4 uh, code will start from default beginning of the flash, so 8 million hexadecimal, and it will take uh, 128k of flash, and RAM will start from the beginning of RAM, uh, so 20 million hexadecimal, and uh, its size will be 32 kilobytes. Then, for ARM Cortex-M0 Plus core, uh, the flash will start 
with 20,000 offset and it will have as well 128 kilobyte of size and RAM will start with 8,000 hexadecimal offset and it will have as well 32 kilobyte of size. We can change it manually uh, once we start the code processing. Thank you for your attention.